What's going on guys and welcome back to the Stock Advantage. My name is Darren and today I'm going to start a new series for you called Winners vs. Losers. And so what that's going to be is I'm going to break down three of the top performing stocks of the day, three of the worst performing stocks of the day. And within each stock we're going to talk about um, what their gain or loss was for the day, why it went up or down, what the historical price action looks like for that stock because you need to get a bigger, broader picture of what the stock is and what it's doing. And then we'll talk about what could happen tomorrow and going forward. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, guys, so the first one we're going to talk about are going to be our winners. Uh, so the first winner is SNDL or Sundial Growers. Uh, today, they were up 14%, so we can look at it right here. Um, they were up 14% on the day, and then after hours, they are holding uh, actually up just a little bit more at $1.64 per share. Um, so why it went up today? First one was a positive catalyst. Uh, they announced a 50-50 joint venture with the SAF Group to form a, a Sunstream Bancorp. Um, so it'll generate investment opportunities in the cannabis industry. Uh, it's similar to what they've done with some of their recent investments into some other companies, except what they're doing is they're breaking this out. It's not going to be just SNDL doing this. Uh, this is going to be the venture part of the business so that they can keep SNDL focused on what the business it is. So looks like they saw an opportunity there to consolidate and invest in smaller cannabis companies. And so they're, they started this joint venture um, to help with that and keep it segregated from the SNDL um, company activities itself. So that was a big positive catalyst for today. And the other one was just a continuation of the market and sector rebound. So you can look in Tilray, uh, ACB, uh, CGC, um, they were all up some today, not as much as SNDL. And so I think you had a twofold uh, jump today that, that correlated to that, I guess, 15% jump on the day. So the historical price action on this one, it crashed like the rest of the market did, and it's rebounding nicely. Um, so you can look at the past three months, you saw the jump up here, it's cooled off, market crash, and then now it's starting to rebound nicely. It's got some positive catalyst, uh, plus the rebound of the whole entire cannabis sector happening right now. So that's what the price action looks like. And then last, what could happen tomorrow? We could see a slight pullback tomorrow um, just from the, the amount it kind of ran up today, right? You know, after the catalyst happens, uh, stocks tend to pull back some. We could see some of that. Um, but I think we could also see a continuation of run-up into earnings. Uh, I think earnings are being reported on the 18th uh, pre-market, maybe. It's going to be early uh, on the 18th. So um, more details on kind of what, what's surrounding my thoughts with the um um, the earnings that they're going to report on this week posted in my video from yesterday, the weekly update for SNDL. Uh, check that video out. So, you know, I think that this is a, another positive thing for SNDL. Hopefully it keeps continuing in the right path. All right, next up, the next gainer is check or check cap. So this one uh, hit big today. It was up 100%. Uh, got up to $3.07 a share. Uh, drop back a little bit and uh, after market down to uh, two dollars and ninety four cents. So why did it go uh, up today? So the FDA approved their investigational device exemption. So this allows them to start their pivotal study on the C scan in the U.S. Item did not get approved, but them being able to start the study got approved. That's important. That's important takeaway. So once they got that approval, now they can move forward with their. Um, their study, which they're going to do in 2021, uh, it's going to start not until late 2021. Okay. Um, so historical price action on this one looks a lot like um, a lot of pharmaceuticals. Um, they actually had a, a big pop, a big pop back in January. And that was based on um, them getting a 180 day extension from the NASDAQ to get into compliance, which they have now done. That's kind of what you see. It, it's it's like most pharmaceutical stocks, dead, big pop, kind of chills, and then a big catalyst. Um, so my thoughts on this one for tomorrow going forward, uh, since they just got approval for the trial and not the actual item itself, um, this one's going to be pretty much dead in the water uh, until it actually does the trial later this year. So I think it's going to cool off rapidly. Uh, you may get a little bit of pump and dump happening, but I would not invest in this one at this point. Add it to your watch list if you like to trade pharmaceuticals and be on the lookout for the trial phases starting later this year. So that's my thought on check. All right, next up, AMC. So we all know about AMC. Today it was up actually 25% on the day. 
Um, why it went up, it actually wasn't a squeeze situation. They announced plans to open their California um, movie theaters this week. So that was great. You know, they've, they've been taking a beating over the last year. And in most areas of the country, their theaters have been shut down for a year now. So they are opening up theaters again this week. So that was what the big boost was uh, 4 a.m. 1449 today. Uh, finished up at 1404 and then aftermarket is down a little bit so it did have a big spike today so that was solid especially for the people who've been bag holding um so historical right if you look at the historical of this it, it's brutal this company has been on a five-year downtrend uh, movie theaters are getting more competition from streaming services so you know in in the if you look at the trade it, it's or the the history on this one it's not too great uh, it's actually trading at 2x what it was pre-pandemic. So this dude was only in the 6 to $8 range pre-pandemic. So uh, as far as the long-term hold, I don't see this. I see this as people trying to get in and make swing trades or uh, day trades and those kind of things. This is not a long-term hold for me. So uh, I think it will have a healthy pullback um, in the next coming days. Um, so be cautious of that. All right, next up, let's talk about the losers. So first off is GameStop. So they're down 17% on the day. Let's see what they're at after hours. After hours, uh, they're up a little bit. They're up 1.53%. Uh, so uh, overall, that's kind of what's going on. Um, so why? Uh, you know, I think this is just what happened last time, right? They have this huge squeeze, this huge run up, and then you have the major fall down here. Uh, fall back down to earth, kind of plays dead for a while has some bounce, get some new squeeze opportunity. Uh, we spike, and then you're starting to see some of the same trends. So I would not doubt this one to keep falling. Um, you know, last time it got down into the 40s, I could see that happening again, uh, if not lower. So next up, let's talk about TRCH or Torchlight. So today, Torchlight was down 11%, down about another percent after hours. Uh, and so why did it go down today? Uh, pretty much they announced a merger um, with, uh, who is it, Meta Material. And so they announced a potential merger with them, and that led to some of these huge run-ups you saw here, uh, followed by a cool down after the catalyst, right? So that, that's typical. Uh, and so what happened um, lately is the merger uh, got talked about that, um, let's see, they expect to hold a special meeting within the next 30 to 60 days and expect the closing um, of the arrangement to occur the second quarter of 2021. So pretty much what happened is the merger is further away than people want it to be, right? People, people think, oh, merge today, you know, go to the moon. Uh, that doesn't typically happen. This, this is typical merger chart. You get a lot more run up on the uh, news and then when there's, there's lulls and there's not a whole lot going on. They start falling off. You might get a little spike here and there. Uh, but ultimately, this one's going to run flat or continue to sell off and have little bumps until the merger is complete and until the business actually starts uh, working as one unit. So I think it could be a bounce back. It could be an overreaction based on the, the news they had. So I think tomorrow could be a potential you know bounce back, back to 5%, 10%. Um, you know, because the delays in the merger do cause overreactions. But I wouldn't just straight buy blindly. Look for signs of an uptrend. Look for a bottom. Um, because this stock does have some some at least swing trade potential. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's pretty volatile. It's got a decent bit of volume. Uh, and so, you know, there is some opportunities here. Just, just trade that one wisely. That last one is going to be YSG or Yatsen Holding. Um, and so this dude was down 11% on the day. Uh, up 1.2% after hours. So why did it go down today? Uh, as a continuation of the earnings report beatdown. Um, so pretty much they had a raise in operating cost. Uh, and so that led to operating loss, right? That was, that's pretty sweet little round there. But anyways, if you look at this stock, they've been on a uh, rant. They had a pretty good run up. They just, uh, I think they just IPO'd last fall sometime. They had a pretty good run up here to 25, almost $26 a share. And that was early, um, early February before it just started falling off the map. The market started going down. Everything started going down. The problem is this one has not come back up yet. Uh, looks like it may have tried a little spike here, but then kept falling down. Uh, and so you look at it and their earnings, um, weren't too solid. So, you know, they've been on a downtrend since February. Um, they were almost at $26. 
their price target did get elevated to $23 a share by CICC. Uh, and so I think this is an overreaction that is just a continuation. Uh, but would I buy it tomorrow? Maybe not. I, I want to see this dude break. I want to see this thing get a positive trend going because it's done it before. It's gone from 17 up to 20 uh, and then just fell off the map. So uh, I want to see this dude start breaking in back in the 15, 16, 17s um, and see that consistent uptrend for more than a day or two at a time before I would consider trading this one. Um, you know, and the, the thing I saw on this one is that even though their earnings weren't great, their future forecast for Q1, they anticipated 35 to 50% growth this quarter. So if that all comes down and it's true, um, whenever they report their next earnings, they may have a blowout and it may do really well. So keep an eye on this one. This one's very interesting. Uh, and just going to the $23 price target, that's that's a pretty good upside. Um, I'm not even going to do the math right now. Probably 70, 80%, something like that. Something like that. But anyways, I tried to do the math. I probably failed. Anyways, oh well, it is what it is. Um, so anyways, that's the top three gainers or the top three winners and the top three losers for the day. Just wanted to talk about those briefly because a lot of times people see something run up majorly and they think I'm going to jump in and I'm going to keep riding it up, which is not always the case. And they see stuff at the bottom get beat down and they think, oh, it's, it's overreaction. I'm going to get in because it's going to go back up. So neither one of those things happen all the time. So you need to, to dig into these companies, do your own due diligence and understand why they fell or why they jumped. And is that something sustainable or is it just a catalyst play that's going to cool off or heat back up? Right. So you've got to take that into account. Remember, I'm not a financial financial advisor. I just do this for entertainment purposes only. Just thought I'd bring you the top three gainers and top three losers for the day and see what you guys think. So if you like this style of video, make sure you comment down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel, comment on this video, like it, all that fun stuff. It's a uh, fun time. So link down below for two free stocks from Webull if you're interested in that. And that's all I got for you today, guys. So until next time, have a great day and God bless.